Last week, this programme exclusively revealed how America's biggest oil giant, ExxonMobil, worked behind closed doors to water down climate legislation in the US. Last night, we showed the similar techniques are being targeted at the UK government ahead of the COP26 climate conference in Glasgow in November. Tonight, we reveal how the energy giants use social media to reach millions of people with messages promoting natural gas as a solution to climate change, despite Facebook's promises to clamp down on the spread of misinformation. All of this, as a new study suggests that events like the extreme heat North America is experiencing are at least 150 times more likely as a result of human-made climate change. Here's our Washington correspondent, Siobhan Kennedy. At the end of 2020, we began removing false claims about COVID-19 vaccines from our platforms. Since then... During the COVID pandemic, social media companies were quick to shut down conspiracy theories, hoaxes and falsehoods relating to the virus and to vaccines. Since launching this new policy in early February, we've removed 2 million pieces of content globally. Former President Donald Trump was even banned for two years from Facebook for a severe breach of the company's rules and thrown off Twitter altogether. But when it comes to climate change misinformation, is big tech still playing catch up? Today, where food is finest, it's cooked with gas. Gas! Cooking with gas. gas. Cooking with gas. gas. We all cook better when we're cooking with gas. gas. For decades, we've been bombarded with adverts selling gas as the key to modern living. But it's that same so-called modern living that is wreaking havoc with our climate. And yet, in 2021, ads like these are being targeted at young people on Facebook. Clean energy revolution. Haven't you seen what's happened in California? Bad energy policy has left them dealing with rolling blackouts. How'd that happen? They adopted policies putting natural gas out of business, and now they're struggling to keep the lights on. Last night, this program told you how oil and gas companies lobbied the UK government to position natural gas as a vital solution to tackling climate change. And tonight, Channel 4 News has seen data that shows Facebook is taking millions of dollars in advertising sales from the US oil and gas lobby to promote the so-called benefits of natural gas on its platform. The data shared with us by the think tank Influence Map that analyzes how businesses affect the climate crisis shows that Facebook received nearly $10 million running ads like this one. This ad, for example, suggests that young people are in favor of natural gas, a claim scant in evidence. Others claim political support for natural gas is needed for a cleaner energy future. And this one, which says that natural gas is the reason that US carbon emissions are the lowest in a generation. When you also look at the term low carbon, it's important to remember that it's being used to describe gas in comparison to coal. They're taking scientific statements that have a degree of truth and manipulating them to kind of promote their own interests, which is a continued use of fossil fuels in this case. Oil and gas companies have even taken to paying influencers on Instagram, also of course owned by Facebook, to promote the benefits of gas stoves. According to Facebook's own community guidelines, the platform prohibits ads containing misleading information. But the claim that natural gas is a green or clean energy source is challenged by climate scientists. It emits less carbon dioxide than coal, yes, but crucially, the methane it releases is 84 times more potent over a 20-year period. And the International Energy Agency says that growing global gas demand threatens the net zero targets needed to avoid climate meltdown. I think, I mean, it is part of their attempt to greenwash themselves and to shift the public debate to make sure natural gas continues to be part of the, the solution. And I think that's a real problem. This is Bill Weil, the former director of sustainability at Facebook, but he says the company is allowing misleading information on the climate to be pushed on its platform. I do think that what we have now is a little bit too much of the Wild West and and not enough regulation and not enough 
moderation or flagging or other ways to prevent these platforms being used as as the you know one of the most effective propaganda platforms ever. The American Petroleum Institute was responsible for most of the ads we looked at. They call them energy literacy posts and say their work to inform the debate around climate and energy policy making is grounded in and validated by government studies and independent analyses. Meanwhile, the American Gas Association, which also promoted some of the ads, said natural gas had helped reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the US. With young people as a target for many of these ads, I decided to go and talk to some of them to gauge their reaction to the claims. Clean energy revolution. So the revolution should include natural gas. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you laughed when you saw that advert. I did. Why? Uh, I just laugh anytime I see an ad just with very explicit bias. I think it's rude that they're targeting us like that, like with misinformation, when it's like a lot of older people who are running these ad campaigns and things like that and not, frankly, not going to be around to see the destruction of the planet. I don't understand like how Facebook can promote these kinds of ads and not offer that same kind of like disclaimer almost like, hey, like this is obviously a very biased ad. They care about the environment, but I think they care about making money, like everybody. So um, I think there should be a possibility to listen to both sides. So if there's one advert that's seeming to be pro fossil fuels, there should be an advert equally. Uh, yeah, there should be. There should be, I think. Should Facebook uh, allow those types of adverts to be aired on their platform? Those ads, I mean, what they're proposing, are not consistent at all with what we need to do to decarbonize, um, you know, at the pace we need to go. In a statement, Facebook told us, we reject ads when one of our independent fact-checking partners rates them as false or misleading and take action against pages, groups, accounts and websites that repeatedly share content rated false. We also connect 300,000 people a day to reliable information through our Climate Science Information Centre. For oil and gas companies, natural gas offers them an opportunity to continue to extract and to profit from the Earth's fossil fuels. But with the last week alone highlighting the fragility of the Earth as we stand on the precipice of climate catastrophe, is it time for Silicon Valley to ban fossil fuel ads and their misleading claims for good? Siobhan Kennedy. Well, earlier I spoke to Lindsay Mayman, a spokesperson for 350.org, an international environmental organisation which aims to end the era of fossil fuels. I began by asking her whether energy companies were right to say gas produces less carbon dioxide than coal. Fossil gas is a catalyst to further climate chaos. We have a once in a generation opportunity to leapfrog fossil fuels and truly build an economy and a society that puts our health and safety ahead of corporate profit. So how damaging do you think these ads are? This disinformation is really nothing new from fossil fuel companies. What we need now is accountability. We need banks and financial institutions and big tech companies to cut financial ties with fossil fuel companies. It's time that we hold accountable polluters who are the ones who are causing the destruction that we're seeing now. But would you like to see Facebook withdraw the ads? Yes, absolutely. You know, there's no room for disinformation. We are at a pivotal moment where we know that the window for meaningful climate action is quickly closing. Uh, and we need to use all tools in our toolbox to take action and transform our economy and society. And for Facebook, that means no longer propping up this disinformation. I wonder how likely is it, do you think, when Facebook gets millions from oil and gas companies, that it will withdraw these ads? It's time that Facebook step into its responsibility. We know that big tech has a role in tackling the climate crisis, and that's not going to come through empty rhetoric or net zero facades. That's going to come from actually cutting ties with fossil fuel companies 
that are responsible for the damages that right now our communities are paying for. I mean, there is a wider issue way beyond the social media companies, isn't there? And that is with governments. And we've been exposing this week how big oil and gas companies use their muscle, and they have considerable muscle, don't they, in essentially trying to water down climate legislation, both here and in the US. I mean, what can governments do about that? The time is now to stop propping up the fossil fuel industry. Not only is this the coal, oil, and gas industry responsible for wildfires, for floods, for hurricanes and droughts that our communities are paying for. They're also bankrolling our politicians and front groups to the tune of billions. We know that this dark money, this dark underbelly of the government has gone on for far too long. And so we're determined to demand that our governments, whether it's here in the US, our congressional representatives, no longer meet with fossil fuel lobbyists. Saying that you know, it's, it's time for elected representatives to no longer meet with lobbyists. I mean, that's mm -hmm. not gonna happen, is it? Well, the elected officials are elected by the people. And we know that you know, studies have shown that over half of people in America support making polluters pay their fair share for climate damages. And it is the responsibility of our elected officials to represent the, pe the people who have elected them and not fossil fuel lobbyists. We know that the global demand for gas is actually rising. How problematic is that? We know and report after report is showing that there is absolutely no room for new fossil fuel projects, for new fossil fuel finance, if we want to meaningfully tackle the climate crisis. As I mentioned, we have a once in a generation opportunity to transform our society and economy and actually make polluters pay for their destruction. And so instead of you know, propping up coal, oil, and gas, these fuels of the past, our government has the opportunity to really guide this transformation. Lindsay Myman, thank you very much for talking to us today.